In this episode of On The Run, we are at the Dash to the Finish Line 5K. 11 Olympians and more than 5,000 runners have made the journey from the United Nations to the ING New York City Marathon finish line right here in Central Park. We'll take a look at the race and meet some of the runners, so stay tuned. Welcome to this special edition of On the Run at the Dash to the Finish Line 5K. I'm Carla Bruning with Carrie Tollefson and Tim Hutchings. Today is the day before the ING New York City Marathon. But before we get to the race, we've got a 5K to run. We have got a 5K to run, and I'm really excited. It's my, my old event, the 5K. It's just over three miles. It takes around 15 minutes. The men are a little bit less than that. But, uh, you know, there's thousands of people out there who are going to be running. There's someone that warm up for the, for the marathon, but they're great elite fields, and, uh, boy, is it going to be good racing. You know, I'm excited for tomorrow, but today was kind of the day where if you traveled with someone running the marathon, you could actually participate in your own race. So a lot of friends and family jumped in the 5K and got to run on the streets of New York City as well and enjoy the excitement and, and to cross this finish line, which I think all of us would love to do again or do it for the first time. Well, I am excited to see the 5K, but it's been an amazing week here at the 2013 ING New York City Marathon so far. Thousands of runners from around the world have made the journey to New York City for this year's race. The week-long celebration began with the Poland Spring Marathon kickoff and continued through the week as the planet's best athletes arrived and greeted the world's press at the Timex Media Center in Central Park. As the pros prepare to compete against a world-class field, thousands of their fellow runners ventured to the ING Health and Fitness Expo to pick up their race numbers and any last-minute necessities for the race. Race week excitement culminated with the marathon opening ceremonies presented by United Airlines, where delegations of runners represented countries from around the globe. Song, dance, flags, and national costumes filled the final mile of the ING New York City Marathon course. The professional athletes joined in the celebration and the night ended with a spectacular fireworks show presented by Poland Spring. The 5K has an incredible field of professional runners this year. 11 Olympians, including three medalists. Carrie, tell me about the women. Yeah, those medalists, two of them happen to be the women, and that's <laughs> kind of fun. But Shalane Flanagan, our favorite here from America, she has a bronze medal from the 10K. And also Sally Kipiego of Kenya, who is the silver medalist from the 10K in 2012. So our most recent Olympic medalist is Sally, but she's coming off of a 14-month layoff. We'll have to see how she does today. And certainly Molly Huddle is going to be in the mix there too. Molly will be, of course. I mean, she's the U.S. record holder at 5,000 meters on the track. Uh, what amazes me about the quality of this field, you know, this is November. It's a 5K on the roads, which is a little less formal than the track. But they pulled together an amazingly strong field, a really competitive field. Most of the top American ladies are here. Well, we had a chance to catch up with Molly Huddle and Shalane Flanagan earlier this week at the Timex Media Center. Let's take a look. With us are two American record holders who will be competing in the Dash to the Finish Line 5K, Shalane Flanagan and Molly Huddle. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, Shalane, you made your marathon debut here in New York. What's it like to be back and running the 5K? I don't think I've been back for three years, which is really sad. I had an intentions of coming and running the Dash last year, but it got canceled. So I think there's a lot of extra energy people have stored up because of not being able to participate last year and are have a lot of motivation and intensity to bring to the 5K this year. But yeah, it's, it's nostalgic being back here because I had such an amazing experience my first time running a marathon here. And I'm, I'm genuinely jealous of everyone running the marathon. But I'll get to showcase my skills over three miles as opposed to the 26. So yeah, yeah. Shalene, you can kind of do it all. I mean, cross country, roads, track, you know, what is your favorite? I mean, it's, it's I love crazy. the variety. Um, but you know what? My passion in my heart lies in the marathon. 
can fall in love with it and it can also break your heart at the same time. Um, it's just a fabulous, fabulous event. Molly, what about you? You're, you're the American record holder still at 5,000 meters. You've got this 5K uh, to do Saturday and uh, you were, broke your foot earlier in the year, so your summer was compromised a little bit. Are you coming into this with a little bit more frustration and a little bit more hunger? Um, the 5K is my comfort zone. It's my favorite distance. So I am coming into it kind of excited, and we actually have a great field. So even though it's a no-pressure race, um, there will be uh, formidable challenges for everyone. <laughs> so I'm excited um, to just take part in the, in the weekend in any way that I can. And you're coming into this off some pretty hard training, you said, in a couple of weeks, 100 miles a week, the heavy legs? Yeah, um, I've freshened up a couple of days, but um, just kind of an experimental phase, and the girls were doing the marathon training, so I would jump in and see how I handled it. Yeah, and Shalane, where's your training at right now? I know that you guys have some more races on the schedule, so talk about that. Yeah, so I took a much-needed break after uh, the World Championships this summer, and I've been gradually building back up, but... Um, yeah, I have some more races ahead of me. I have a 12K in two weeks after this. So this will really be kind of the kickstart to the mini season that I have. Nice. And now when you're running a 5K on the road, do you approach it differently than when you're doing 5,000 meters on the track? Definitely. I think it's easier on the track to kind of know your places where you need to kick. And um, the road, you can get a little lost sometimes. But... Um, you know, some people really thrive off that, that it's not as monotonous as the track. Well, there will certainly be lots of fans out there cheering for both of you, and we wish you luck in the race. Thank, Thank you. The men's race also has an incredibly deep field. I mean, two of them, Nick Willis and Lopez Lamont, have already won races here in New York earlier this year. Yes, they have, of course. Nick Willis is a, a double winner of the uh, Fifth Avenue Mile, one here in September. Nick is a miler. He holds the, U U the New Zealand record for 1,500 meters. He and Lopez Lamont are the real speedsters. I mean, Lamont's got a great, a world-class 800 time. But the strong boys are here. You know, you look at guys like Alistair Craig, Chris Selinski, the former record holder of the 10,000 in the USA, uh, Evan Jager, the, the steeplechase record holder. These are hard. Hard men and 5,000 is, is a long way. If it goes out hard from the start, it'll, be, it'll go down to the strong guys, not the milers. Yeah, we can't forget about Aaron Braun. He was second here, you know, two years ago, and he's been tearing it up lately. He's having a lot of great races and also PRing in most of those, so he might be a dark horse. Well, we had a chance to catch up with two of the American favorites, Evan Jager and Lopez Lamont, earlier this week. Let's take a look. Joining us are two American Olympians and U.S. record holders who will be taking on the Dash to the Finish Line 5K, Lopez Lamong and Evan Jager. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks Thank for having us. Now, Lopez, you won the Wanamaker Mile right here in New York earlier this year. You raced here a lot. What are you looking forward to this weekend? I think it's a, it's a great celebration for me to open my season, uh, especially in a place that I, I so um, have a great um, career like especially 2013 and uh just gonna go out there and put myself in a great position and and run with these guys and and you know try to win yeah, yeah i want to win lopez how, how is your shape genuinely because no, normally november is the fall it's a fairly quiet period for track runners like yourself just before we came on camera you mentioned food three times so i get the impression you're just easing into your winter's racing and or your winter's training is, is this race actually something you're prepared for not really because like i I, um, I did some little training, uh, not the way I, I normally come here, like especially a few years ago. So it's good to be, uh, come back here and, uh, and really see what my, my run has been. Mm -hmm. So Evan, I want to go to you. Yeah. You have obviously had a great year, set the American record in the 3K steeple, which actually is new event to you. You really love the 5K, don't you? And so you're excited to race on Saturday. Yeah, I do love the 5K. I started out my professional career as a 5K guy. Uh, I made a world championship team my first year mm -hmm. in the 5K. So it's always going to be like a clo close uh, event to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of fun, and it's one of the toughest events in track and field. So uh, it's good to be able to go out there, change it up, run it on the roads instead of the track, and uh, just compete with a bunch of guys great in 
a number of different dif distances um, and just kind of put yourself out there and have some fun. I, I've got to ask you the same question because I mean, I'm glad you said that. I think the 5Ks are a very tough distance. It's sort of where long distance and middle distance meet. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unforgiving event. Are you, are you in reasonable shape for, for this, ra we, this race? Uh, a lot like Lopez. Um, we both had really long track seasons. Uh, didn't finish off the season until late September. So uh, we had our break a little bit later than normal. I mean, my idea is to come out here, race as hard as I can, uh, try to beat as many guys as I can for sure, uh, but kind of see where I'm at and then take uh, take training from there and just build off of that. Well, there'll definitely be lots of people out there cheering for both of you on Saturday. And good luck to you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. An incredible field of runners at this year's Dash to the Finish Line 5K. After the break, we'll catch up with a few of them at the starting line and watch the race itself. Run with the team instead of a gang. Run so fast food can't catch you. Run to accelerate in the classroom. Run to turn dead ends into open roads. Run to be a success story. Not a statistic. New York Roadrunners free running programs move kids forward and help foster healthy communities. To donate or learn more, visit nyrr.org or call toll-free 855-NYRR-RUN. Twenty-six point two miles make it a race. You make it the marathon. You can watch it live, the ING New York City Marathon, Sunday, November 3rd at 9 a.m. on ABC7. Welcome back to this special edition of On the Run at the Dash to the Finish Line 5K. Tim and Carrie had a chance to catch up with a few of the top contenders before the race. Let's take a look. Evan Jager, good morning. The race half an hour away. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Got a good night's sleep. Got some coffee in me, so I'm energized, ready to go. Now look, right at the end of the track season, you ran 13.02 in Brussels in a, one of your first serious 5Ks, I guess, since you really reached world class. Yeah, uh, it was an awesome experience. Brussels was an incredible venue. It was packed. It was loud. Very exciting. And then it was an awesome field, so I just kind of hung on and just tagged along and ran, to, ran a fast time. Now that was, I guess, a couple of months back. You've had a decent break since then. How much training have you put in? Uh, I'm about like four weeks into training, building back up. So uh, this is about this is a little bit of a rust buster, uh, like we we like to call it. Um, it'll be a little bit different than Brussels, but it'll still be a lot of fun because the crowd and the energy is incredible here. And you, you think you can be competitive this morning? You've only had one hard workout. You were saying to me yesterday. Yeah, uh, that's that's the goal. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, it might be a little bit of a stretch to say I'll finish up in the top three, three but um, I'm looking to get up there, compete, and just rub elbows with a couple of guys. Good luck in your Ross Buster. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Sally, silver medalist from the 2012 yes. Olympic Games. This is your first race back in 14 months. You were a bit yes. injured last year. Talk about that. I was injured last year, so I really didn't have a 2013 season. So this is a well-delayed comeback. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just excited to be running in LT again. And, and where to do that uh, than New York City, yeah. you know? Do you think, I mean, is it going to go really well today or are you just getting back into form? What do you feel like? I'm really going into the race very open-minded. Okay. Anything could really happen. This is my first race in a really long time. Yeah. So obviously it's going to be rusty, but what I can assure everyone out there is you're going to get 100% effort from Sally tonight, today. <laughs> is it fun being in New York City? Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your favorite part about being in the city? I mean, look at this. I mean, to experience New York Marathon this weekend and just to be able to see and meet people around the world doing this and being passionate about running is amazing. Pretty it's fun to see amazing. your fellow Kenyans racing on Sunday, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. All right, go get them. Thank you. All right, well, it's finally time to dig into what really happened in the race itself. Tim, on the men's side. Men's 5,000 meters today was an amazing race. Very strong in depth, really good quality field. I mean, I ran a 5K here back in 1989 through Manhattan, and it is the most amazing feeling running through those 
big blocks. They went through the first mile this morning, this big pack, in 4 minutes 27 seconds. Alistair Cragg from Ireland, former South African, doing most of the hard work, pushing the pace. And I think this is because he recognised that this race was always going to be a challenge between the strong guys, the 10,000 metre runners, like Chris Solinsky, for example, and the milers, who could be really dangerous in a, in a tactical race with a fast finish. But uh, they went through the first mile in 4.27. It was solid running, undulating course. This is not a flat course by any means. Uh, and uh, at two miles, 8.52, they'd run a 4.25. There was a pack of six. It had been whittled down quite substantially, but still, Craig had been doing most of the work. And then it began to, to, to stretch out, and uh, Chalanga, Sam Chalanga, the Kenyan, uh, who is uh, a man who lives in New Hampshire, lives in Hanover, New Hampshire, the, the 1309 man, which is world class for 5,000 meters on the track, began to take charge and really turn the screw on the rest of the field. That was about 10 minutes in, in the third mile. Aaron Brown, by the way, has had a fabulous year. He was second in this race two years ago in the inaugural dash to the finish line, and he was dragged away with Chalanga. He looked really strong. The man in yellow, Ch Brown, was uh, right on the shoulder of Chalanga the Kenyan, and that pair built up a 20-meter lead uh, on Dave Torrance back in third place and Nick Willis, who was beginning to struggle through the third mile, uh, and Alistair, Alistair Cragg as well. With 12 minutes on the clock, as they approached three miles, Chalanga broke away. Willis and Torrance were really struggling a little bit further back. Aaron Brown was hanging in there, trying to stay with the Kenyan. And then they got into the last quarter mile. And uh, this is where Chalanga looked like he got it sewn up. But this is an undulating course. It's not a quick course. And with 200 yards to go, Nick Willis in the yellow, the man from Australia, from New Zealand rather, he's the national record holder at 1,500 metres. He's an Olympic silver medalist at that metric mile. He was the danger man. He's the miler. And he turned it on and he chased Chalanga down and with about 60 yards to go, got past the Kenyan, and it was an amazing grandstand finish right here in Central Park as Nick Willis uh, stormed to the line just a metre or so ahead of the Kenyan. It was a great run from Nick Willis, coming back from injury. Nick Willis, Olympic uh, silver medalist back in 2008. You needed some speed in that last sprint. Yeah, I fell off with a mile to go, but they didn't get too far ahead, and I knew if I went with 400 to go, I sort of checked my spot in training, and I knew that I could wind my way up the hill like I could do back in Ann Arbor, Michigan, or in New Zealand on the hills. No, you're the New Zealand record holder in the mile of 1500. It's a, 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 a 5,000 a long way for you. Was it tough, the middle stage? Yeah, it really was, but that's why I wanted to do it today. At what point did you think I can get these guys? Because I thought you were gone with about three, 400 yards to go. Basically, I thought I was running for second. I thought I might be able to catch one of them, but the leader would kick again. But once he wasn't able to respond, I thought, yeah, that's mine. That was classic 1500 meter finishing. Well done. Carrie, I had a chance to watch the finish here. It was a nail biter. Yeah, it was like crazy. I was thinking, who's winning? Who's winning? I thought Sam was, and then I saw Alistair uh, back there, and I saw Nick Willis, and I was like, who's going to win? And then all of a sudden, Nick Willis shows he is that true 1500 meter runner who has such speed. It was really fun to watch them all cross. And then to see that there's a baby on the sidelines waiting to cheer for his daddy coming home. Nick, Nick Willis is a new dad. It was a really special day. What a great race. When you had a chance to sit in the truck and watch the women run, tell yeah. us about that. Now that was an exciting race as well. Three abreast right from the gun. They took it out. Molly Huddle right out in front. Shalane Flanagan and her training partner, Emily Infeld. Sally Kipiego right there and Kim Connolly. You know what? All of these girls right ready to run right from the gun. They went through the first mile in 4.55. So it was really pretty hot from the gun. They really, it's a little bit of the uphills are in the first mile. So that second mile, I was wondering what was going to happen, but they stayed pretty much the same. They hit 456 for the second mile. They went on to 6th Avenue, and it started to break apart a little bit. That's where Shalane kind of pushed. Molly, Emily stood right on her side, but really three, four seconds back, that's when we saw Sally Kipiego maybe start to hurt a little bit, where that 14-month layoff might have started to play in a little bit because she hasn't raced. So Kim Connolly was a little bit behind her. Then we enter the park in mile three, and it really started to get interesting. There was a little bit of jostling with the lead. Shalane, I thought, looked like she was the one that was starting to hurt a little bit. Emily Infield looked like she was pushing, but you know what? Molly Huddle brought it home hard and set an unofficial record by 30 seconds. So they were running fast today. Great weather for a 5K. Tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit cooler, which is perfect for the marathon. Well, it was certainly an exciting race on the professional side, but there are more than 5,000 other runners taking on this course. And it's a real dream to have the streets of New York City open. Usually the races happen here in Central Park, but runners got to start at the United Nations, run across 42nd Street and up 6th Avenue to the finish line of the ING New York City Marathon. There is a feeling of excitement and anticipation in the air here. Really excited.
26.2 miles make it a race. You make it the marathon. You can watch it live, the ING New York City Marathon, Sunday, November 3rd at 9 a.m. on ESPN2. Today's Cold Hard Moment is brought to you by Coors Light. Today's Coors Cold Hard Moment of the Day is New Zealander Nick Willis's late race surge to win the Dash to the Finish Line 5K in a time of 1346. The 1500 meter Olympic medalist kicked past Kenya's Sam Chilanga in the last meters, edging him out by mere tenths of a second. And that's today's Coors Cold Hard Moment of the Day. Today's 5K is just a warm-up for the main event tomorrow, the marathon. All week long, we've been following the stories of just some of the runners who are taking on the race, but we've saved the best for last. Brian Steinhauer is a truly incredible young man who's sure to inspire us all. You know, I had a chance to get to know Brian earlier this year, and uh, his, his warmth, his spirit, and the adversity he's overcome is just amazing. Well, we talked earlier in the week about how many people have used running to recover from emotional problems and physical problems as well, but this is an extreme case. It has almost literally saved his life. You know, it's brought him back to reality from an, an incredibly bad injury after a terrible incident. Uh, I haven't met, the, haven't met Brian, but I mean, it's an inspiring story. And, you know, people who get over those sort of issues in life, we get worried about getting a parking ticket. You know, it's nothing. Well, Kerry, I was there when he crossed the finish line of the NYC half, and he was pumped. I can't wait to see him cross the marathon finish line. Yeah, you got to talk to him, but I got to see him in, as well, and he was so excited. And I saw him at the opening ceremonies last night just taking it all in. But you know what? There is a winner tomorrow in the race. There's a person that finishes that, cro that finish line first, but he has won in life, and he really is a true inspiration and someone that we should all take a life example from because, man, he's been through a lot, but, you know, he's ready to move on and enjoy this and celebrate along with all the other runners tomorrow. All right. Well, here's the incredible story of Brian Steinhauer. At 22 years old, Brian Steinhauer had his entire life ahead of him. But the only thing that makes them hot is men. Oh, pause. But his story turned a tragic page when he was attacked by three men in a bar. I'm about to start my life, about to graduate. Pretty much having the diploma in my hand already. Having the time of my life just partying away. Very excited about to be an accountant. Then I wake up in the hospital. Can't move can't talk. One of his assailants kicked him repeatedly in the head, leaving Steinhauer unconscious with severe brain damage. Steinhauer languished in a coma for three months. Three out of his four limbs were frozen. His arms were completely frozen. We didn't know if he was going to make a recovery at all. My family was very angry and upset. They had to sit there and watch me helplessly. He had a pillow up and a ball and he was able to kick his leg at at the pillow when we said pillow and kick his leg at the ball when we said ball and that was the first time that we knew that he had any capacity for language. I'd ask the doctors like will I walk only answer I got was we see no reason why not. That's not any kind of motivation to work. Steinhauer has spent the last five years relearning to walk, talk, and eventually taking and passing his CPA exam. He now works as an auditor for accounting firm KPMG. If you need a raw solution because I've been through too much training for a delusion. My friends, my family, my parents were there every day by my bedside. Without any of them, I wouldn't be here. So okay, I'll give it a try. First thing, learn how to transfer from a wheelchair to the bed. Really just get up and sit down. That by itself was a challenge at first. I was afraid of pain, who likes pain? But then I saw how much the pain was improving me. Not enough pain. Lo and behold, here I am preparing for the marathon. No walking. Running the entire way. Steinhauer founded Minds Over Matter, a foundation for young adults with traumatic brain injuries. He used his training for the NYC half to raise money for the foundation through CrowdRise. People with brain injury, they need support. They need someone to love them. They need someone to show them that if they put their heart towards it, they can recover just like me. Only five years after suffering a life-threatening injury, Brian achieved the unimaginable. He trained for and completed the 2013 New York City Half Marathon. When I was a patient 
in Masana Hospital, seeing people run the marathon, run past my hospital room, and thinking, wow, that's amazing. Oh, they'll never be me. Five years later, it is me. It takes endurance. It takes determination. It takes energy. It takes intention. I fully committed myself to do this. Finishing the New York City Marathon this year would mean that anything is possible. Welcome to the Marathon Lounge presented by Tata Consultancy Services. Here in the lounge overlooking Columbus Circle, visitors can take on the marathon course themselves in an interactive experience or hang out on race day and watch the runners go by. Let's check it out. All right, Smitty, you're running the ING New York City Marathon. Where, do you know where you are in the course right now? I think I'm in Brooklyn right now. The Marathon Lounge presented by Tata Consultancy Services is also filled with TVs where visitors can take in the race on Marathon Sunday. The streets will be packed with people and chaotic. You might only get a glimpse of runners passing by, but here in the lounge you can sit back, relax, and just enjoy the ride. Experience the excitement of race day no matter where you are. Saturday, November 2nd, the Marathon Eve Experience will air live on ABC7 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern from the Marathon Finish Line. Eyewitness News anchors Liz Cho and David Navarro give viewers a primer on what they can expect during the running of the 43rd ING New York City Marathon. Sunday, November the 3rd, race day. Live race coverage in the New York City metro area will be on ABC7 from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern and nationwide on ESPN2 from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Viewers can see race highlights too from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and on their local ABC affiliate. International viewers can watch the broadcast via a live digital stream on 7online.com from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. No matter where your fans are on race day, they can follow your journey via the web, text, and our mobile app. Track my runners on the web. On race day, spectators will be able to track up to 10 runners at a time. No pre-registration is required and the service is free. Sign up on race day at trackmyrunners.nyrr.org. Follow our official Twitter and Instagram feeds on race week, race day, and beyond. Remember, you make it the marathon. So join the conversation using hashtag INGNYCM. And the recap of the 2013 ING New York City Marathon will go live on Monday at 4 p.m. So stay tuned. It's been a great day here at the Dash to the Finish Line 5K and an amazing week. But tomorrow is the main event, the 2013 ING New York City Marathon. Tim, how excited are you? Boy, uh, you know, this has been the warm-up today, I guess. But tomorrow is the big race. You know, 48,000 may be running out there. But the elite race is what we're going to be focusing upon, really. And, and I'm so excited about that. I, I think Jeffrey Mutai and Priska Jeptu are the outstanding favorites. They're both uh, uh, chasing big money. You know, there's, there's half a million dollars for the World Marathon Majors winners. But... Uh, uh, I'm I'll be intrigued to see whether or not each of them can dominate, as I expect they may do, uh, come the latter stages, or if we get great racing uh, in the latter stages as well. I I I'm uh, easy either way, because I think it's going to be a good day for running. A lot depends on the wind, the weather, but we'll see. You know what? I'm equally excited to watch those guys race, but Bujanish comes right from here. Bujanish Deba, right from the Bronx. I'm excited to see if she can, you know, capitalize on that second place finish that she had in 2011. But more importantly, I'm excited about the back of the Packers, too. I mean, we have heard from some of those, but I know some of them, and I'm just excited to see everybody have a healthy, great race, but also give back to the city and also for the runners to be able to enjoy the city. I mean, we've been through a lot here, and it's time to celebrate and to move on and to, you know, get back to what this race is all about. That's definitely true. I'm so excited that we have a race this year, and I'm excited for those 48,000 runners. Having been one of them before, oh, I know what it means, and it's, 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 gonna be fun. it's truly something that runners dream about. Well, I would love to thank all of the volunteers who have made this week possible and all of the New York Roadrunner employees as well. From Central Park, I'm Carla Bruning with Carrie Tollefson and Tim Hutchings, and we are on the run.